Okay. Welcome, everybody. Wow, this is a huge session. I thought it might be. We have got hundreds and hundreds of people who've signed up for this from something like 57 different countries all over the world. My goodness, we've got people from all over. Wow. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. I'll just do some uh, quick introductions before we get started. So I am Danielle Stein Fairhurst. So I am a financial modeling specialist. We have got Susan Wilkin here. I'm in Sydney. Susan is on the Gold Coast uh, in Queensland in Australia as well. Now, Susan is going to uh, do the, the back end of uh, things tonight. She's going to help out with the chat uh, and the q and I'm going to ask you not to, um, or we are, we, um, we are not going to, um, normally we do the Q&A right throughout the session, but tonight we are not going to do um, Q&A during the session because we're not going to interrupt Kenny while he's doing his fabulous model build. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free though to jump on the Q&A. You'll see a little panel down the bottom, there's Q&A, you can ask your questions in there. Or if you have any questions or comments, you can pop those in the chat and Susan will be uh, handling those for now. Uh, Susan is also going to be uh, serving as our timer, so she's going to set up her video. So uh, I keep referring to it as evening uh, because it's five o'clock here in Sydney, but Kenny is joining us from the UK. So I'm going to just read out your uh, your bio, Kenny, if that's okay. So Kenny Whitelaw-Jones sure. is a veteran of the financial modeling world. He spent nearly 20 years in financial modeling, both in the delivery of financial modeling assignments with top tier accounting firms and training of financial modeling professionals. He is a visiting lecturer on project finance. He's trained over a thousand modelers from the world's leading commercial and investment banks, top tier accounting firms, infrastructure funds and developers. He's a leader in the financial modeling industry. He founded the Financial Modeling Innovation Award. So he is a very innovative person, as I'm sure you'll see. Uh, he now runs a model of financial modeling world champions, so championships. So welcome, Kenny. Thank you so much for agreeing to do, to do this. Um, you are very brave. Madness, Danielle. It's madness. We'll see. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for organising the session. Really appreciate it. Yeah, when I when uh, when I invited you to speak, I thought you'd talk about you know something sort of uh, you know financial modelling related, but I really didn't expect that you would um, be game to do something like this. So you are going to build a full financial model, a project finance model, no less. A project finance models are more complex than your average financial model, and you're going to do it in twenty minutes. So tell us a bit about what you're going to do, Kenny. So look, we're going to, we've been working on a piece of software called Openbox. Um, and, and, the, and it's kind of a structured development environment for financial models. Um, and, and so, so yeah, the, the, what we're going to do is kind of demo that and see how we can use that. It's really about bringing pre-built modules, pre-built components together. Because a lot of what we do when we're building a model is repetition. Like every deal is different. Every deal is bespoke. Um, but there's underlying elements of models which are similar between models. And we, we've been looking to see how can we speed up the model development process. Um, and, you know, there's, there are tools out there that, that kind of already are a modular approach to modeling, but none which were tailored to what we want. So we thought, let's build our own. Mm. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just kind of crack into it. Um, my, 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 my purpose here is to get, is to, is to show this and also to get feedback. So my details are on the screen just now. Um, so feel free to email me directly, um, with thoughts, with, you know, with feedback, with questions, with credit card details, um, all of that stuff. Um, so I'm just going to talk quickly about it and then we'll go into the model build, build session. So, you know, if we're, if we're able to, to build this, then it's down to a, a team of people who've been working on this software. Um, so I just want to say so a few quick thank yous, cause this is not really about me. It's about, you know, we've got a development team who've been working incredibly hard. We've had a group of alpha testers who've been kicking the tires in this software. And so I want to say especially thank you to Ben, Burton, and, and, and Charles for that, and then to the whole Good Lines team. Um, anybody who's heard me talking anytime over the past uh, lot, lot of years, I, I talk a lot about the business analysis lifecycle, about what it is that we're doing when we build a model. And I just want to talk about this very briefly because it puts into context what Openbox is for. So if you haven't seen this, it splits the world into two, the real world and the model world. We start with a business problem. We start here. And in order to address that problem, we 
can we develop a conceptual model we have to understand the problem we have to understand the business which we then represent as a spreadsheet model so that we can do some analysis and if we do all of that well that leads to some insights that feed in back into the business that we're that, that, that you know the business problem that we started with and in my experience here's where modelers add most value right it's in this conceptualization of the problem understanding the problem understanding the business and then doing the analysis and delivering the insights the spreadsheet is the tool that we need to do those things it's not the end in itself so there's i see a disconnect because these are the areas where we add most value yet these this is the area where we spend most time we spend so much time building the model that often the value add stuff gets compressed so what open box does it gives us a uh, it kind of sits in between this conceptual stage and this spreadsheet stage for helping us conceptualize what we want to build and then and bringing in components that we already have pre-built and then and then creating the model more quickly and that so that's our intent mm -hmm. behind behind this behind open box um just a quick note on standards um OpenBox currently, you know, it, it can build model to different standards. We're, we're using it to build model to the fast standard. So what you will see today, OpenBox will build model to a fast standard. That's because we're building it. Really, we built this tool for our own team and, and we build models using fast. So, but there's no reason it couldn't build models to any other, other standards, relatively standards agnostic as a piece of software. So that's kind of, that's kind of what, what it's for, right? It's not replacing Excel. And it's not replacing the modeler, right? The modeler is still absolutely core to all of this. And, Glad to hear it. It's just, yeah, absolutely, right? It's just, it's a tool to, to, to speed up the repetitious work so that we can focus on the value add work, which is the conceptual, the commercial, the analytical. That's the intent behind what we're doing today. So let me, let me come out of here, let me come out of PowerPoint and let me just introduce the software environment. So, um, Danielle, can you see that on your screen? Um, still, are we still sharing? Uh, yep, you are going into yep. Excel. Cool. Yep. So, so this is the this is the the open box environment. And let me just introduce the three areas here. You can see this is this area here is kind of like the model itself. And each of these lists is basically going to be a sheet in the model or a number of sheets. Um, and, and this area here is our reports area and then our formula bar, okay? And an open box is really built around reports because every time we build a model, we're building it to create a report of some kind, usually a set for us, a set of financial statements. So if I just add a new report in here, this is gonna be my income statement. I find it incredibly hard to talk and type at the same time, but we'll give it a shot. So this is, this is my income statement and we could add our cash flow, our balance sheet and so on in there. And if I add a new item onto my income statement, um, and I, I know lots of things we have, we're very keystroke based and it's because it's software and development, there aren't keystrokes for everything yet, but all of the key kind of things that we need to do repeatedly, we already have keystrokes for. And let me just rename this as revenue. Okay, so revenue is the first item on my, my financial statement. I can add, let me add another one and I can name it on here instead. So that's going to be my, let's say, cost of sales. And then if I add another one, let's call that one, say, um, gross profit. Okay, and I'm going to tell OpenBox that on the income statement, gross profit is going to be the sum of the lines above. Okay, so... So now very simple revenue cost of sales. And I'm just gonna move my Zoom stuff out of the way here so that I can see the top of my screen. Right, so this is unallocated because OpenBox doesn't know where we want to calculate this. It's, it's each of these kind of, you know, each of these represents a, a, a sheet in the model. And this represents what's gonna be a calculation block. And if you know fast, you know that we're all about calculation blocks. And so I'm going to perhaps create a new sheet for this. So this would be perhaps my operation sheet. And we can see here, OpenBox telling me this is a quarterly sheet. So the underlying timeline for this model is quarterly, and this is a quarterly sheet. And I'm going to take revenue, and I'm going to move it onto my quarterly sheet. If I do 
control and right arrow, it's going to move it between sheets. As soon as I move it onto the input sheet, it gets input formatted. This is kind of telling us this is going to be an input because Openbox is like, if it's on the input sheet, it's an input. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to move it onto the operation sheet. Again, if you know fast, you know about placeholders. And so right now, Openbox is saying, this is going to be a placeholder. You've told me you're going to calculate revenue, but you haven't done anything yet. Therefore, it's a placeholder. And there's some information about revenue on here. This, this arrow tells us that it's a series-based item. It's going to be over the timeline. And it's got the units on it as well. And I can start to write a formula. So if I do F2, I go into the formula pane, F2 familiar Excel keystroke. And revenue might be price times, let's say, production volume. So I'm just writing these as words with square brackets around them, production volume. And I'm gonna hit enter. And now revenue is no longer a placeholder, right? Because we now have a formula for revenue, but that formula needs two new things. And so those are placeholders, right? And so price is not gonna be a series item, it's gonna be a constant. So if I do control shift C, that makes that a constant. And let's say production volume could be a constant as well. And that's going to be an input. So I'm going to do control shift I, move that to my input sheet. And that's going to say, let's be say $5,000. So I'm just putting a value in there for that. Production volume is not going to be in US dollar thousand. So I'm going to change the units for that. It's going to be in say widgets per quarter. So I really just want to give you a sense of visually what open box looks like and what the different components mean, what the different visual elements mean. And that's also going to be an input. So let's throw that off to our input sheet. And let's see if that's going to be a thousand. So now revenue is price times production volume. Price and production volume are inputs. Let's just quickly do the same with cost of sales. Okay, moving it over to my operation sheet, F2. And it's going to be say unit cost times and when I, when I open the square bracket to write a formula, to write, a, to write, to give a variable, to define a variable, Openbox gives me a list of all the variables that are in the model right now. Okay. And I want to link this to production volume. So I start typing production, P-R-O, it filters that list for me. So now I can see production volume is there. I hit tab. Hit enter. It's like using a table re name reference, isn't it? Right, right, exactly. And 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 so and so now um, cost of sales is unit cost times production volume. Um, unit cost has been created as a new item. So let me throw that off to the input sheet. It's also going to be a constant. And let's say that's two thousand dollars. Now there's one component missing, and that's time, right? And so on, with fast, every time we're looking at time intelligence we're using a flag. And, and so in Openbox, flags are very structured components. So we have flags, we have indexation factors, discount factors, um, so that we can define these and then apply them to any line item. So here I'm gonna use the operational period flag as, as, as being the when for, for, uh, for revenue actually. So component, flag, operation period flag, and I'm applying a flag there. And so now we've got the little flag appears. It says this is now dependent on the operation period flag. And let's do the same for, uh, for cost of sales. Okay, and then let me just save this because, you know, Excel has been known to crash. Um, um, so let's call this kind of work in progress one. Hang on, are we in Excel? So we're in Openbox. This is in, and I'll show you in a second. This is Openbox, which is an Excel add-in. Um, and so we are in Excel. This is just an add-in sitting on top of Excel. So very simple, you know, three line report with two simple calculations. So before we go build that, what we can do is we just validate that. So I hit validate and it's running a series of checks on the model, first of all, telling us like looking at saying, well, there's some things that you've not used. Days in the periods being calculated here, but it's not being used, but okay, I'm gonna ignore that. Periods in a year is not being used and it's now running internal checks, okay? A whole series of internal checks to make sure units are consistent, 
make sure there's no circularities and so on. And in a second or two, it's going to come back and tell me models validated. Now, in order to do that validation, it's built all the components kind of behind the scenes. So if I hit OK, we can go into kind of a preview mode. And for example, if I want to look at revenue, if I click here, I can see, again, let me get my zoom out of the way. It's just going to give me a preview of what that revenue calculation is going to look like. So we defined it as, let's give me a second, my zoom stuff. We defined it as price as $5,000 times a number of widgets times a flag, and it's previewing that calculation now. And the same with cost of sales, right? Unit cost times volume, giving me cost of sales. Because I put cost of sales as a negative here with brackets around it, it's also put the sign switch in so that it can put it onto the financial statements. And what I could do now is just send that to Excel and the model would be built, right? And it would just be a standalone model with all using my template, using the way I like to see models, you know, or where, you know, whichever the, the kind of template is we've defined. But this, so this is kind of a preview mode. It's kind of a halfway house in between OpenBox and Excel because it's often really useful to see your numbers, right? Oftentimes you can only really understand if something is right by kind of seeing the numbers. But I can come out of that preview mode and right back into OpenBox. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna send this to Excel because I wanna use the time to do the full model build, but this just gives you a sense of what it looks like. And it's kind of a, you know, we're, we're, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a controlled environment. It's a structured environment where we're much more focused on the conceptual relationships between items than, than if we're in Excel and we're thinking about creating links and copying stuff and moving stuff around, all that formula writing. Right now we're at a much more conceptual level, okay? So that's, and that's useful and it means we're kind of eliminating coding error because I'm not the one copying stuff across a timeline or linking to the wrong thing. Um, um, it's kind of eliminating that coding error. But the real power of this, to, and this is why we've built it, is in using pre-built components. Is in saying, if I'm building, let's say a project finance model and it's a solar model, I know what solar model, what revenue looks like. I can bring in a component, plug it straight in, and I don't have to build it from scratch. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and do that for, for a full kind of project finance build. So I'm gonna close this one down and we're kind of in Excel. We can see that this is the open box add-in. So I've just closed down that add-in. So we're in the ability to start from scratch because the, the, the promise here or the commitment we made was we're gonna build a model from scratch in 20 minutes, right? And so, so you've not got any, you haven't got any in inputs hidden in there or anything like that. This is just, there's nothing in here. This is blank sheet, look, nothing here, right? Nothing here at all. Are right? you, just a couple of things. Um, hmm. Are you able to zoom in at all? I know with the other screen, you kind of needed the whole thing, but wherever possible, if you're able to zoom in, that would be, be Got it. I will. I will do. I will do. Yeah, um, we can. We can just, zoom in and out on the open box. Yeah. And just quickly, for those of you on chat, um, if you wouldn't mind, um, just making sure that you uh, add your chat so that everybody can see them, not just the panelists. That would be helpful. Thank you. Right. Here goes. Twenty minutes. Are you, Susan? Susan's going to be the uh, the stopwatch, so she is yeah. going to change uh, her virtual background. That. Okay, so we we're off to the races. We started. Oh, okay, so we started already. I'm hitting, I'm I'm started again. You, right? <laughs> oh, you're going to start again? Okay, okay hold on, hold on. I'll start it again. again, Susan. I'll start it again. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. Four. Okay. Three. So when we, new, when we hit new in open in open box, this is what it looks like. What oh, template do you want to use? I'm going to tell we want a quarterly model. Start date, 1st of January, 2020. Let's say financial close is gonna be March, 31st of March, 2020. Nine month construction. Let's say we go for 25 year operations, default unit USD thousands. We hit okay. So that's the start. And that's just defining the time structure of the model. All of the components that we're gonna bring in are agnostic towards time. If you bring in a, bring in a construction component, then it's, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to be taking into account the, the, 
you know, it's going to apply itself to that timeline. So let me just extend this. So this start template has got the financial statements already built. So you can see we've got an income statement, we've got a cash flow cascade, you know, project finance cash flow cascade, we've got a balance sheet. And because we have all these financial statements kind of structured, we're starting with a lot of placeholders because Openbox is saying, right, if you want all of these things to be on your financial statements, this is, here's all the stuff you've got to calculate. And we're starting with a, a lot of placeholders. And as I start to bring in template, a, a pre-built components like revenue, you'll see that they connect themselves to those placeholders and those placeholders will disappear. So let me give you an example, right? So I'll start with components. I'm going to my component library and I'm going to choose simple PV revenue and OPEX. You can immediately see that the revenue and operating cost um, placeholders disappeared because they're now being calculated by this component. So the component came in to, for solar PV revenue and all of the things that are on here that are yellow are things that solar revenue needs but couldn't find in this model. And so it's just said, right, I need the production volume. I need seasonality. I need availability. They're not there, so they must be placeholders for now, okay? And we can go into kind of zoom mode. If we want to understand more about what is, how does this revenue calculation work, if I do control shift M, we go into what we call kind of zoom mode, where we can see the detail of what are the precedents to this calculation. And I can move around in here. You can see that, that for example, this flag, the operation period flag, is a precedent to this calculation. Part of that pre-built component it was already in the model. And so when that component came in, it's just connected itself to that flag. And if I, if we move around here, we can go, you know, if I, for example, want to look at electricity generation, I hit enter and we're now centered on electricity generation, a dependent of which is revenue. And here's the precedence. I can go back to revenue and center myself there. And so this is a, you know, this is a useful way to move around the model seeing at the same time all the precedents and all the dependents. So, you know, we can, we, can, we can understand in more detail what's going on. Let's go back to our kind of big picture view. All of these placeholder items are inputs. So I can ship them off to the input sheet all at once. Control Shift I just converted all of those placeholders to inputs. And I'm just gonna do some tidying up on those. So I'm gonna grab these, I'm gonna group those up. Shift F2, PV revenue. These two here, I think these are more like kind of model constants. So I'm just organizing my inputs. And then what about these three here? These are inputs that are gonna be more about OPEX. Okay, so I've brought in my revenue and my operating cost. What's next? Let's deal with working capital. So accounting and tax, working capital. Brings in my accounts receivable, an accounts payable module. Um, again, let's just ship these inputs off. The receivable days, payable days. Um, let's just group that up. Um, this is my working capital section. So most of my work here is actually about organizing my inputs because the, you know, the, 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 the modules are doing the work of here's all the calculations we need for working capital. I haven't talked about balances. You can see that this little symbol tells me that this is a balance, right? Um, and so accounts payable, also a balance. These are going to feed into my balance sheet. And look, I may not want all of this on a, on, a, on, a, on a separate sheet. I may want to say, well, actually, I'd rather have my working capital on my op sheet so I can just move that around and put that there put that there and then let perhaps just get rid of that sheet. But I don't want a separate working capital sheet, let's just say. All right, so we're just over five minutes in and we have done revenue, OPEX, working capital. What's next on my list of placeholders? Well, I've got depreciation and financing. Well, in order to depreciate something, I need to have built it first. So let's do some building. Uh, go into components, library, construction, EPC and common construction costs. 
You can see here that this module is monthly, right? Typical in project finance, we have a monthly construction period or maybe quarterly semi-annual operations. So this module has come in and it's monthly. Let me just ship all those inputs off to the input sheet. Grip the, you know, here we've got EPC, contingency, development fee, development cost, all the typical stuff we'd have. Um, um, let me group those up. And those are construction costs. And then if we're going to build something, we better finance it. So let's have a, a library financing. And I'm going to go for simple, because we're under some time pressure here, pro rata um, um, construction financing. Again, let's organize these inputs. So, you know, commitment fees, upfront fees, swap rate margins, and so on. Um, and so this is construction financing. Okay, so now we've built something and we financed it. Another quick component I might need from the construction period is, is this timeline aggregation. There's a few lines that are, that, that are monthly lines that my quarterly cash flow needs. So I just need to tell Openbox to aggregate those into quarterly lines so that we can use them in our reports. Kind of more just a reporting thing, get that out of the way. And then final construction thing, sources and uses. Very typical in a project finance model to have sources and uses. You can see that this has come in again monthly. These are cross-hatched, which is Openbox's way of saying these are not being used anywhere, right? They're just for information. But again, I can zoom in on that if I do Control Shift M. So uses of funds has connected itself to all the other things that are construction costs um, and, and financing costs. And so here's the list of everything that's in the sources and uses. All right, so that's my construction kind of done. Now I'm going to deal with my, my assets, so the depreciation of that asset. And I'm going to go for simple fixed asset treatment here. We, you know, in, in infrastructure and project finance, there's different there's different asset treatments we might be using, again, keeping it relatively simple. Um, so my asset accounting modules come in, it's taking care of depreciation, my fixed asset balance. This module needed a new flag, which is the useful life of fixed asset flag. That flag wasn't in the model already, so it's created a new flag here, which, has, which needs an input for the useful life of fixed asset. Um, let's put that to the... Uh, to the time sheet, to the, to the input sheet, and that's going to be my asset accounting. Um, and now we've got debt, right? So that we've got the construction debt taken care of, but we need the term debt and the amortization of financing costs. Let's bring in our senior debt with amortization. It's a slightly bigger module, so it takes a little longer to come in. Again, it needed a new flag. Let's just bring that, but it's also got the, the term debt assumptions, swap rate, margin, day count convention. Let's send these off and let's group these up. And that's gonna be my senior term debt. Okay, so we're making good progress and, and gradually all of our placeholders are disappearing, right? Because we are, you know, we're gradually replacing them. Now, as we work on projects in different jurisdictions, we've got to deal with different tax treatments, different accounting treatments. And that's one of the reasons we're building this is to think, right, if we've already done tax in a particular jurisdiction, we can capture that as a module here and bring it in. I'm not going to go into all of that complexity around tax. Instead, we're going to use what we like to call our stupidly simple corporate income tax which is, doesn't go into all the detail we would normally see, but just keeping it very simple. Um, we've got a corporate tax rate and moving that to the, to the input sheet. And they're gonna just put that as a tax assumption. And I'm just gonna give that a value, right, of 15%. These, these components that we bring in, they can hold values like dummy values so that when it builds the first model, it, it populates it with some values or it can just be blank like that one was. So just want to make that, that point and I'm going to give it a value. So when the model builds, it's going to just assume a value, which we can then change either here or in Excel once the model's built. Nearly done on placeholders. There's a few left, share capital, dividends, retained cash. So a final component here, financing, and we want dividends and share capital. 
bringing in another quarterly sheet to deal with share capital, the dividend payment. And then we've got some opening balances for retained earnings and cash. If we were to bring in, for example, an early generation revenue module or a, you know, a revenue during construction, or if we were using a different accounting treatment, we may have then, then kind of fixed asset, we may see calculated balances for those things. But right now with the way we've set this up, it's gonna be just opening balances. So group those up and just got a couple of opening balances. Now, that's all good work. Where are we 11 minutes in? So let me just save this um, as webinar 01A and I'll be really happy to to send the model that this creates you know, to anybody who's turned up here. So you can have a look at it, validate it for yourself. Um, what else do we need? Maybe some, maybe a couple of metrics. Um, so if I go into the library, metrics, uh, equity IRR, um, what else? Um, metrics, perhaps the debt service cover ratio. Now we can see here when we've brought this ratio in, it's got something, it's another calculated item, but it couldn't find in the model. So senior debt service. So this, you know, sometimes when we bring these models in, we might have to do some manual calculating, manual kind of connecting up, depending if the module has found it or not. And I've set this up so that we can kind of show this. In this case, we know what debt service is. It's interest plus principal, right? So now you can see that when I do my left square bracket to start typing the name of a variable, we have a lot more variables in the model now, right? We've now got hundreds. So this filtering starts to become really useful. So I'm going to go senior term, and that filters now to only the variables that have senior term in it. And I want my senior term debt interest plus senior, oh, wrong bracket, senior, uh, the typing thing again, senior term debt principal repayment. Now, when we build the model and we go to Excel, let's just keep this bit in mind because it'll be useful to, for us to see what OpenBox did in response to this command that I've just given it, okay? All right, so actually, I may not want these on the same sheet, on, on two, two, I don't want a, a whole sheet just with DS, one DSCR calculation on it. So let me just tidy that up a bit. We'll put period DSCR is the heading here. And we'll put it on a sheet called metrics together with the equity IRR. Okay, so we'll just put those together on one sheet. Just move that over there um, and get rid of that sheet there. Delete, we need a good keystroke for that. Um, and then let me just call this metrics. And we probably would build this out with other metrics. Look, 14 minutes in and we've kind of done our job. The question is, will it build, right? So I'm gonna save it. And this is the this is the moment of truth, right? I'm not gonna do oh, the- well, Six minutes to go. Six minutes to go, sorry, yeah, yeah. Six minutes to go. And now we're gonna do, do the build. We're gonna send this to Excel, right? Um, the validation step that happens as part of what we're going to do when it when it when it's going into build mode. So I send this to Excel and it's going to start running the internal checks. Um, so it's saying hours in the period is not used in the model. So I'm going to just ignore that. Uh, sources of funds not used. We know that uses of funds not used and so on. Right. So there's a few things that equity IRR. So I'm going to just say ignore for all of those. Those are, so the equity IRR is being calculated, but it's not going anywhere. So that's what it's warning us about, unused calculations. So you can see that there's already kind of pre-build audit checks here. And this is the moment of truth, right? And it takes a couple of minutes, right? For this to, for this to kind of take all the stuff we've brought in, validate it all, and then send it to Excel. Um, and this is the part where you're like, is it going to work or is it not going to work? So now it's flipped to Excel. And one of the things on the product roadmap, you know, software is always work in progress. Um, and one of the things in the product roadmap is a better user experience during this phase, right? Because it takes a minute or two to actually build the model now. Because it's building a complete model from scratch based on the components that we've brought in. That takes a minute or two. Um, and, and this just spinning wheel of death is not 
the the most ideal user feedback. Um, I thought you were going to do a bit of a tap dance or something while we're. Um, while we're I waiting. thought you were going to tell some jokes, Danielle. You said you were going to do. Oh your yeah, yeah, yeah. Some jokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so it's in build mode now. It's now doing the formatting, and as I'm as we're building, I'm realizing I didn't do the work of kind of re ordering those sheets. I was just, you know, bringing these modules in in different orders. And so when it builds, the sheets will be in a little bit of a random order because I, I didn't re, re, reorder them there. Um, but we'll see in a second um, as, it, as, it builds the, as it builds the model. Um, it should be uh, any second now. So there's a bit of tidying up you need to do at the other end. Uh, can, we could do that in open box as well. I just didn't do it before we built. So, so you know that basically the the order that those sheets appear in that pane is mm -hmm. the order that the uh, that they will appear in the model. So it's it, okay. you know it's got the, the first the first sheets appearing. Okay. It's finishing off the job. Um, and can uh, you go backwards and forwards? Between. Yeah, you, you, you can, you can. And that's the idea. And, and that's, the, again, that's on the development roadmap to make that better. You can go backwards and forwards. Um, it, it's, there are some clunks in that just now. So, so look, here's, here's the model, right? So let's just first go to, um, let's go to, uh, let's go to the, 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 the report sheet. Okay, uh, you got three minutes. Well, I'm done. Okay. I mean, the model's built, right? So we're done. So we did it in 17 minutes. So what are you going so, to do for the next three, two minutes? I don't know. Well, I'm going to show seconds. you the model. I mean, I mean, hopefully, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a decent looking model, right? Um, so so cool. you know, these are all the line items that we defined on our report section of our model: balance sheets, setup, and balances. Open box can add checks. I didn't do that, but open box can add. You can specify things that you want it to, to check. Um, let's look at, let's go and look at, so the sources and uses module that we brought in, as I say, it's not going anywhere, but it's just a reporting element. Now on the metric sheet, um, oh, and I didn't, I didn't tell OpenBox to, to format that as a percentage. So uh, we, we want to do that. Remember when I brought this, this DSCR module in and it needed debt service and it didn't have it. And so it created a placeholder and I defined it by typing the formula interest plus principal. And so that's what it's created here in response to that. It's, it's linked to interest, it's linked to principal, and it's basically, you know, it's built the, built the full model. Um, if I look at the construction cost, you know, that was the work of three seconds, right? To bring that module in, send the inputs to the input sheet. All of the input grouping um, that we've done, you know, and I, when I was working through the input sheet, it's, you know, PV revenue, working capital, all our construction costs, construction financing, structured exactly as I grouped them in open box. But where um, did the where did the inputs actually come from? I didn't see you actually typing the inputs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me go back into let me go back into open box now. And um, if we go to, to that module, as I said, as I was building it, I was going really quickly. So you, it, it's you know understandable yeah. that it would be it would be it would be lost. The module can hold values, right? So the open box module, as well as holding, here's how the calculation works, it can hold the values as well as dummy data. Um, and, and I find that's more useful because if you just leave the values to be put in when you get to Excel, when the model builds, it's just zeros and divide by zeros and all that stuff because it doesn't have values to work with. Um, so having, you know, having a, a module with some dummy data is helpful. And so when it brought it in, if I go to the input sheet on, if I go to the input sheet here, for example, our construction costs, you know, if I click on EPC price, it already had a hundred million in here as an EPC price. In was, the, that in a, the was that a default that you'd already- That was just a the default value that I'd saved in that module you know, for fun, you know, um, okay. Um, okay. And, 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 you know, a contingency I'd saved as 5%, development cost of, you know, 12 million. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a lot of questions. Oh, yeah, and our time, is, our time is up. Well done, Kenny. <laughs> we're getting a lot of questions about that, about the inputs and about changing when you want to change um, the assumptions. How do you, how do, right. you do that? Well, I mean, you can change them here. So, so I could change them here and then rebuild the model on the back of that. But, but now what we have here, this model, 
Okay, so if we if we flip back to the model itself, this is a standalone model. I can I can now send you this model, and you can change the inputs because it, it's just a fully built model, right? So now it doesn't need OpenBox anymore. It can go back and forward. If you have OpenBox, we can go back and forward between OpenBox and the model. And, and one of the things that we're going to going to going to provide is 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 reader software. It's kind of if you think about the kind of PDF model, right? That you can create PDFs or you can have software that just reads PDFs because all of the, all of the information because needed to create these diagrams is saved in the Excel. So if I send you this Excel file and you have open box, you can view it in the, in the open box um, environment, which I find really helpful, you know, for, you know, like we talked about, you know, earlier, if I go to, to the, um, um, let's say um, the, the EPC, right? If I look at my EPC cost and I want to get, you know, looking at it in this mode, which, which I find really useful because I can see precedence and dependence all in one place. Like, right? the, uh, like the Power BI relationship screen. Exactly. So you can, I can see the relationships here. It's always good to see things um, visually, isn't it? It's so helpful to see things yeah. visually and also to be able to move around um, um, and say, right, so this is moving to construction costs. That's a dependent. I can now recenter on construction costs. And, and it shows me all the precedents and the dependents for, for, for that one, all in one view. So I'm actually becoming, it's becoming that I prefer to, to view, to review a model in this mode. And so if it's been built in OpenBox, even though I send, anybody can open the Excel file. You don't have to have OpenBox. It's now just a shareable, normal Excel model, but the, the open box can read it in this format if it was built in open box. And, but if you then make changes to it in Excel, can you then go back into open box or does it need to be? Yeah, to so, so and there's another thing we can do, which is we can, we can ingest models. So open box can take a model that wasn't built. And this is, this is one of the things that we're doing is, because um, the power is the modules, right? The power is the components. You know, the really, the, 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 as you seem to be able to kind of assemble a model quickly requires us to have these, these, these modules. Well, we have a lot of models that we've worked on where, where we've got a section built that we want to bring into OpenBox so we can reuse it somewhere else. So OpenBox can also ingest code. Now it has to be well-built code, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be, and so if it, it you know, in, in, it works particularly well if it's fast because fast is so structured, right? Um, but as long as it's well-built code and consistent, OpenBox can do a pretty good job of, you know, we, we tell it the code block, it will read it in, read the relationships, figure out what's an input, what's a calculation, what's an output, and then conceptualize it this way. And then that often, you know, that, you know, that, that's, that's not the slickest right now that, you know, that, that you know, it works. Um, and, and so that we can then ingest and then, you know, abstract, models into this conceptual layer. Wow, okay. Uh, where to start? Do you wanna, um, is there any more you need to explain to us, Kenny, or are you ready to take questions? I'm really happy to take questions. I mean, the, 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 the objective was to build the model, you know, and, and, and really the, the, the reason we can do that, and it's, it was a complete model from scratch, is because, is because the, 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 what we've worked really hard on is making it possible to bring in components and have them intelligently connect together. Find out if they need a flag, is it already in the model? If so, just, just connect to that one. If not, okay, mark it as a placeholder, and then we can, we can either manually match it or we can send it to the inputs, wherever. So that, that's what we've been designing around, is, is designing around the structure of, of reporting and around the, 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 the ability to really efficiently assemble components. So mm -hmm. look, that's what I wanted to kind of demo and, and, and you know, that's the, I, I, that's what I would love feedback on. I'd love to hear what people think, um, um, get questions. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, there's an interesting question from Angela. She says, when because that, that screen that you're on right now is so helpful, can you uh, include that in the Excel model? Or do you need to just create a screenshot or, or how does that how does that work? Yeah, no, you can create a, you can create a screenshot. So if you have, can I you mean, if you have open box. Automatically? Say again? Can you automatically include it in the model? We haven't we haven't built it so that you can automatically put it into a model that can be read without open box. Um, um, I mean, we could do that. It's not kind of top of the development path right now because, 
because we're you know we're, we're, we're working on open box so if you've got open box you can automatically see this right um and we could put that into the model um mm -hmm. but that's the idea behind the, the reader software right is that is that without you know and which will be free right the idea is that you know if we you know that, that anybody with the reader software can then view the model in this way and um, another question about time varying inputs. So mm. uh, Ron says, uh, if you have an inflation, inflation adjustment factor for the first 10 years, and then it changes, for example, after 10 yeah. years, um, how, yeah. does, how does it handle, I assume there's well, a... I mean, how we would handle that in a normal model would be to have some kind of a flag that says, you know, the, a flag that says we're in the first 10 years and we're in the second 10 years. And, and, and this would be no different. We would just define a flag that said, you know, this is the, which period you're in, the first 10 years or not. And then, and then you would bring that flag in as a component to the calculation, exactly the same we would in a normal model. And um, there's a few open box specific functions. Perhaps I can show you um, those. Let me just find will be a good example of one. Um, uh, if I go to the asset treatment, actually, um, but, but asset accounting. So the, this asset balance at COD, you can see it's done a sum, and, and this function here is all values. Can you see that? Um, um, it might be a bit, it might be a bit small, small, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. basically it says sum all values construction costs monthly. And, and that, there's, there's various specific functions to do with time because let's just say you were building a formula in Excel and it was looking at the previous period value and uplifting it by some amount. Right. If you were writing that formula in Excel, you would just do equals previous value times the uplift rate. Right. But you can't do that in open box because it's a it's concept, it's more it's a higher conceptual level. So there's some very specific functions. So there is a previous value function. So you can write a formula that would be equals previous value times this growth rate or next so specific value. open box language. Open box stuff because to okay. allow us to deal with the fact that we're sitting we're not writing the formula in Excel where we can point to a column and say mm. equals this. So we need a function like previous value, next value. Like that um, or M or something like that. Exactly. And, and here we've got all values. So what that will do is take the sum across all of the construction period values. And, and that's where the timeline flexibility comes in because I can now go into the settings, the time settings for this model and I could change it to quarterly, I can change the end dates, and I can apply that without having to change any of the formulas because the time intelligence is separate from the, the relationship intelligence amongst the variables. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, so many good questions. Um, does the uh, does the add-in run in memory? Are there memory limitations when building large models? Have you tested that? Um, well, we're building pretty large models. It's just a question of the time it takes to build. I mean, you saw there, right? It took, and the power of your machine as well. I mean, I'm a, probably a little bit because I'm, I'm I'm running parallels on a Mac, so so mm -hmm. I'm running Excel on Windows on a virtual machine on a Mac, and so there's quite already quite a lot of memory load there. Um, and so, you know, high powered, and, and, and just, bef just before we get this question, it isn't built for Excel for Mac, right? It's, uh, we haven't even thought about that and we may ne never think about that. It's built for Excel for Windows. Um, and, um, but, but, um, but yeah, it depends on the power of your, of your machine. But yeah, you, you saw the time it took there to, to spin out a model. Um, it was what, a minute or something, a minute and a bit. Um, and so that just really depends on the power of your, of your machine. Mm, and, the, and the complexity of the underlying model, right? So this is, you know, there, I've definitely limited the scope of what we're doing here. There's some stuff there that we would see that we could add in modules on reserve accounts, multiple tranches of debt and so on that would be very typical for us to see very refinancings, all that kind of stuff that actually uh, then makes the model build bigger and it would take a bit longer to build. But actually... The, the overhead of complexity isn't that much. You can see that when we validated that very simple model, it also took a little bit of time, right? Um, um, that, that, you know, it's not, that it's, it's not just linear in terms of the length of time it takes when the model's more complex, it's more efficient than that. But it does take, you saw the length of time, and this is a decently complicated model, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a minute and it doesn't usually take much more than that. 
And what about, so Mark is asking about uh, how would open books fare for more complicated projects or industries um, in scenario, using scenario analysis? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 it's, it's really, that's really down to the, the, the template that you start with. Um, um, so Openbox is, is not the analytical environment, it's the model build environment, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the model editing environment. And so the scenario analysis you're going to do, you're going to do that in Excel. And come back to the so conversation. You build that after you've gone. You build it. You build that. You build that. I mean, you can see that we've, you know, that you know, with the template that we're using. If I go back into, into the model itself, we're already kind of, you know, set up for different scenarios, um, and and you know that and and that can be whatever you want it to be, right? So you you would have your own template with your own cover sheet, your own input sheet structure, and as long as you set it up properly with the right range names inside your start model so that Openbox knows where to put stuff, then, then it will be your model, right? You, it's formatted the way you want. It starts with your template. Yeah, of course. And so you, however you want to structure your own inputs for scenario analysis and so on, that would be totally, totally up to you. Yeah. Um, and and uh, yeah, the, the, the one thing we're going to do on the, on the, on the roadmap, I can talk, and I can talk in a second about the roadmap, if that's all right, in terms of where the product's going next is, for example, being making it possible to define um, um, on our input sheet um, Monte, Monte Carlo distributions. So being able to say, say, okay, so here's you know EPC price or or perhaps a, a delay factor, or so on, and rather than just being a point in Openbox, we can then define the curve. We can then define the probability curve, so that then it can set it up as a Monte Carlo analysis. Openbox will also check for for circularities. So if there are circularities in the code, it will tell you before you go to Excel and ask you, do you want to put a, a we, we will use it. We would normally use a copy paste circularity breaker. Openbox will put that in for you when it builds to Excel. Wow. Uh, yeah, we're just getting lots of questions about where do I sign up basically. Um, <laughs> are you, you going to send some, are you going to send some of these um, information out? Yeah. The, yeah. Well, let's, let, let, let's do that. And also just want to talk about the roadmap because yeah. there's some, there's, there's some stuff we, we, we're, we're about to move into a closed beta um, where we want a bigger, we've, we've had a, a, an alpha group who've been fantastic in, in using the software, helping us really get to this point. We're going to go into a bigger closed beta now. So we, I want committed modelers who really would like to be part of this to, to sign up on our website or email me directly. Um, we're going to go into a closed beta process now because the model is now really usable um, and, and, and kind of ready for, for, for action. Um, and then one of our intentions is, is that we really want this model to be owned by its users. So we're going to be doing a, um, a, an equity crowdfunding round. Um, um, and so, so, cause we really want the, to, the model to be, to be owned by, by the people who really use it the most. Cause look, you know, it's really optimized for project finance. That's not a huge world. Um, it's a big enough world, but it's not a huge world. And we, you know, so the idea is that if the software can be owned by its users, then we get into a really good kind of feedback loop of, of continually making it better. So that's, you know, we've built it for ourselves and, and it's working well. And, um, if it can be of use to other people, that would be, that would be great. Okay. All right. So if you could, yeah, send out um, that information to everybody yep. afterwards, we'll do that. that would be we'll great. Was there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think we're just about, just about. I don't uh, think so. It's been really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, just lots of questions about how to, yeah, how to sign up the modules. Um, I presume you can. It's quite easy to edit edit the models. The modules. It is, and you can take anything in the model. Let's say, for example, this, right? And I can, if I if I just built this, I can then export that as a component, right? And now that will be available in my component library to bring that back in to another model. Um, and the intent with with the software is that it, you know we, is that we continually to to build to the the the, the, the component library. And one thing I'm wondering is, could we have pre-audited components, right? So if I've got, you know, a component that's, you know, corporate VAT in Oman, right? Or tax, you know, tax in Saudi or whatever it might be. Mm. Could we have a pre-audited um, module so that then, because um, Openbox can tell, has it been changed or not? So if a pre-audited module is brought in or for IFRIC 12 accounting, um, and, it, and not change, that's going to speed up the model audit process. 
you know, by, by Openbox being able to certify, well, this, this hasn't changed versus the pre-audit module. That's kind of blue sky thinking. We'll see if we get there, but that's, that's the kind of ideas we're having. All right. Wow. Thank you so much.